we didn't have to record the first one, so that's why I'm I coming see. up to. How do they decide what's going to be recorded? Good question. I'm not huh. sure. Okay. <laughs> or stream too. So. Yeah. Hmm. I think we usually do all of them. Hmm. Just that. Okay. Is there something like proprietary or? I don't know. The first guy, they said no. Good afternoon and welcome to World Dairy Expo. Today's seminar is Moving Cows, Revolutionizing How We Learn Cow Handling Skills. The speaker is Dr. Jennifer Van Oss, and Dr. Van Oss is an assistant pr professor and extension, extension specialist in animal welfare at the University of Wisconsin-Madison Department of Animal and Dairy Sciences. Inappropriate cow handling negatively affects animal welfare and productivity while increasing the risk of injury for both cows and people. Moving cows is an innovative learning tool that allows people to practice appropriate cow handling skills in simulated dairy farm environments. Developed with feedback directly from Wisconsin dairy farmers and Spanish and English speaking staff who work with cows daily, Users can experience how their actions affect cow behavior, stress, and productivity. Jennifer Van Oss is a, an assistant professor and extension specialist in animal welfare at the Department of Animal Dairy and Dairy Sciences at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Dr. Van Oss received her PhD in the Interdisciplinary Animal Behavior Graduate Program at the University of California, Davis, and conducted postdoctoral research at the University of British Columbia. 
The research in her lab at UW-Madison focuses on understanding, evaluating, and improving the welfare of dairy animals from biological and social science perspectives and the extension program promotes best practices in management and housing to help the dairy industry adapt as our scientific knowledge about animal welfare continues to grow. Today's training has been accredited by the American Registry of Professional Animal Scientists and Dairy Advance for up to one CE credit. Dairy Advance is an online continuing education resource designed to allow dairy farmers and agribusiness professionals the ability to formally track and demonstrate our promise of continued education and lifelong learning as dairy professionals. Through Dairy Advance, you can find, track, and report your continuing education. At the end of this training, we will share more and ask that you complete your attendance validation form to secure your credits. At this time, I would like to ask everyone to silence their cell phones, and Dr. Van Oss, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Taylor, for the introduction, and thank you, World Dairy Expo, for having me here. I'm very excited to share with you this project today, and I know everybody has a lot of competing interests here at Expo, so I just want to say I'm going to make a plug at the end, but I'll announce it here as well. From 1 to 3 p.m. next door in Mendota 2, you will have the opportunity to play the game yourself if you would like, so just keep that in mind from 1 to 3 p.m. next door. So I started here at UW-Madison about five and a half years ago in this extension outreach and applied research role. And so I think it's really critical that the work that I do is relevant to Wisconsin dairy stakeholders. So when I moved here, I met with Wisconsin dairy farmers and others in the industry to talk to them about the challenges that they face around animal care and animal welfare. So you might be wondering, this is a talk about cow handling, why am I standing in a cross-ventilated barn? And this is just to represent that the research that I do in the extension outreach is driven by stakeholder needs. So another big area that I work on is heat stress and ventilation. I also work on parent group housing of calves. But actually the most common request that I got when I started talking with Wisconsin farmers was, can you please come to my dairy farm and train my employees on proper cow handling practices? And I was a bit surprised and at the same time unsurprised by this request. So I wasn't surprised because we know that cow handling is really critical. It's something that affects both animal and employee well-being. So research has shown that when you handle cattle properly, this can reduce the risk of injuries to personnel, injuries to the cattle, as well as cow stress levels. And that in turn can affect the efficiency of the milking parlor operation as well as the cow's productivity. And we also did some recent research that showed that cow handling practices can also affect consumer perception of the dairy industry. But at the same time, I was a bit surprised to hear this request because there are a lot of really well-designed resources already out there, many of them free to teach people about appropriate cow handling practices. So I'm showing here some data that are now about five years old from the United States Department of Agriculture. So at that time, they surveyed dairy farmers and found that just over half of dairy farms in the US provided training to their workforce specifically on moving or handling cows. So that leaves a lot of opportunity where many people might need better resources or better training in this area. And a separate survey the year before had asked farmers, well, what are the barriers or challenges to providing training to your employees. And this wasn't just limited to cow handling, it was any kind of education or training. And the most common challenges that producers reported were a lack of time, which I think anybody can relate to, also a lack of resources and potential language barriers. We know that the workforce has evolved a lot in the last few years, and that language sometimes can present this challenge. But lack of resources was surprising to me because we have so many nice videos and other resources already out there. So this has become increasingly critical. So I hope most people in the room are familiar with the Farm Animal Care Program. So Farmers Assuring Responsible Management, we have some of those people in the room today. They have a booth out in the hall. But this program serves as an industry-wide minimum bar that we expect all farms to achieve. And one of the expectations in this program as of the beginning of 2020 is that anyone on a dairy farm who directly handles animals must have annual continuing education in a number of topics, including stockmanship or proper cattle handling. So I've highlighted that here on this example training record that people can use. So whatever people do 
as continuing education must be documented on a yearly basis. But right now, what constitutes this training or continuing education is open-ended. So it could be watching videos, it could be job shadowing, or it could be having a conversation with the supervisor. So what I'm showing now is just a video example of what ideal cow handling could look like in the milking parlor. So this is my PhD student, Monica Ruiz Ramos. She just started in January, and she is going to be giving the same presentation tomorrow in Spanish. And she does not work at our university research farm. So this is the milking parlor. This was her first time ever in the parlor. And I think a lot of times at research dairies, people think these cows are really used to being handled. They're practically pets. That's going to make them have no flight zone. They're going to be really stubborn and hard to move. But keep in mind, these cows had never seen Monica before. We were shooting this video to make some more traditional video training modules, and they reacted in the ideal manner. So I'm showing this just to illustrate that these practices that we talk about in textbooks and in videos really can work, but sometimes people need reminders or they need practice to show that this is really possible. So we know that these principles about the flight zone and low stress cow handling are very well established. They've been around for decades. So why do people struggle to apply these concepts? Why were Wisconsin dairy farmers asking me for better resources or more training for their staff members? So once they made this request, I started chewing on it for about a year. And I got the idea that maybe we need something more hands-on, more interactive, more engaging than things like videos. And so that's what I'm talking about today. It's a video game called Moving Cows, and that's what I'll explain for the rest of this presentation. So in 2018, I talked with farmers. I heard this need for better training on cow handling. And then around the next year, I got this idea that maybe we could create some kind of simulator. So my father-in-law is a retired commercial airline pilot. And late in his career, he actually switched to flying a different, larger aircraft. And even though he had several decades of experience as a commercial pilot, they didn't just put him in the cockpit. They made him do the flight simulator. And so I had this idea that maybe we can do something kind of like that for animal handling. And at that time, there was nothing else related to any livestock industry that mimicked animal handling or animal husbandry in this kind of setting. But right after I got the idea, I attended a trade show and I saw that John Deere has tractor simulators. And so they had a whole setup with a seat and screens in front, screens behind. So when you're sitting there and you're running through the simulation, it's like you're actually driving this machinery. So this kind of reinforced me that maybe this idea isn't so crazy, maybe this is something we can do, and the technology is getting there, maybe the time is right. So why a game? I actually don't identify as a gamer, it's not really something I do in my spare time, but there actually is this growing field of what's called serious gaming. So some of these are video games, some of these are role-playing games, but these serious games have been shown to produce positive learning outcomes in a number of different settings. So now the military uses some serious games, different workplaces use games in their training. We see this in classrooms for children of various ages, as well as in health behavior education, meaning how you take care of yourself. And the reason these work is because games are interactive. So people are more engaged when they're going through this experience. And you have opportunities to not just learn concepts, but apply them and practice skills. And because of these factors, the literature has shown that serious games produce better learning and retention, meaning you remember what you learned, compared to more conventional instructions, like lectures or watching videos. So after I got this idea, I spent the next two years laying the groundwork, so firming up what would this game actually consist of, applying for funding, coming up with concept art. And in the meantime, as I mentioned, this need became even more pressing because in 2020, the fourth version of the Farm Animal Care Program was released and there was this expectation for annual continuing education in cow handling. So my colleagues and I envisioned that if we could bring this game to fruition, maybe this could fill this way of doing continuing education. And as researchers, we not only want to create the game, but we want to provide evidence to show that it actually works. So great news, in June 2021, we received the news that we received some internal funding that allowed us to begin actually designing the game. So over the next year, we started developing this game in an iterative fashion. So I'll explain what that means. 
So we hired a local video game programming company. They're based in downtown Madison, and they specialize in educational video games. So not entertainment games that you would buy at the store, but ones that are used in classrooms or workplaces, et cetera. So when we started working with them, I came up with the idea for the learning objectives and the content, but they were able to do the artwork, the animation, all of those game mechanics to a very professional level. So we had a first draft, so I'm calling that prototype one, and they released that to us and we gave feedback internally. So this was grad students, other professors who had a range of cow handling experience, and then they improved that to a second prototype or second draft, which we called the alpha. And we took that back out to the Wisconsin dairy industry to get feedback because we didn't want to just design this in a vacuum in the university. We wanted to make sure that it really resonated with the people who would be using it. So this alpha prototype of the game was just a rough draft. So at the time, the graphics were pretty basic, although actually I found them quite impressive. And then there was just an example or placeholder menu of the type of features that the game might have in the future. There were simulated cows who had mostly functional basic behavior, and then players received some just very basic feedback. This version of the game did not yet have this final polished artwork. It only had one level. It didn't have all these other aspects of the barn. There was no audio yet. People could not choose what their character looked like. There were no tutorials explaining how to play the game. There was only one level, and there were some cow behaviors missing. So for example, they couldn't lie down, they couldn't eat. And at the time, people didn't earn a score, they didn't earn a certificate. And the reason that we wanted to bring this out for feedback at such a rough stage was because if we completed the first draft of the game and said, hey, we did it, what do you think? We wouldn't be able to actually incorporate people's feedback and make meaningful changes. So we deliberately took this rough draft out. So this is an example of what the game looked like at the time. It was played on touch screen tablets, which it still is. You can see all the cows look the same. The feed is just black and white placeholders. There's no water troughs, that sort of thing. So what we did was we held different focus groups, and I can see some people in the room who helped us with this. And we started on campus. We're very lucky here at UW-Madison. We have dedicated trainers on campus who teach researchers how to properly handle their animals. So this includes basic cow handling and cow movement, but also things like blood draws, milk samples, rumen fluid collection. And also if people work with other species, these trainers teach them how to handle mice or even snakes. So that was our sort of test group on campus, just to make sure that these groups took an appropriate amount of time, that we were asking appropriate questions. And then we held three other groups on campus, so that's these green areas down here. We had 10 people across three groups, and this included Wisconsin dairy farm owners, some bilingual consultants, and some veterinarians. So all of these groups were held in English, but three of these people were fluent in Spanish. And then we went out to two farms, whose owners had come to campus and participated in those focus groups. And there we held five different groups, so two on one farm, three on the other. And we divided these by language. So some groups were held in Spanish, some in English. We also divided them by role. So we wanted employees and their supervisors in separate groups so people wouldn't feel any pressure to respond a certain way if their supervisor was in the same group. And then also shift, so different farms operate differently and some had people on a night shift, some had people on a day shift, and we wanted to give them all an opportunity to participate. So we had them play the game and then we had these recorded focus groups to compile the feedback, so their reactions to the game, ways that we could potentially improve it and make it more relevant. So this is just a few examples of the types of feedback that we heard. So these focus groups were recorded, they were professionally transcribed and translated. So one piece of feedback was that when players got into the game, they didn't know which way to go because they just started in the middle of the pen. So one suggestion was, why don't you have the character start at the gate? Because when I'm doing my job, I need to enter the pen through the gate and that would help orient me. They also suggested, please zoom out so we can see the whole layout of the pen so we can understand where the cows are and where we need to move them to. And we did implement those things. People also asked us to include water troughs for the cows, cow brushes, which as an animal welfare researcher I thought was just delightful, and you'll see that that was also incorporated, as well as things like salt blocks for the cows. So we weren't going for strict realism. Every farm looks different. It also needs to look appealing, entertaining, You'll notice the cow's body condition score is off the charts, and that's because we needed them to look cute and appealing. 
Some other examples of feedback. This came up surprisingly often. I think this is probably the most common thing. Please just add more manure to the environment. <laughs> the dirtier your character gives as, gets as the game goes on, the worse job you did because you're stressing out the cows and a fear response is that they defecate. So we heard this over and over. People also asked for different actions that they could take in the game. So can you give me an option to just extend my arms or extend my reach and make myself bigger so I can get into the, to the cow's flight zone? We also heard some comments about the character's outfit, so the personal protective equipment. You know, on our farm, we have a big safety initiative. We all wear neon green now. Or on our farm, we have to wear safety glasses in the parlor. So people were trying to relate the game to their actual job on the farm. And then just one more example. The, these virtual cows had too sensitive of a blind spot. So if a player got into the cow's blind spot, they were getting kicked way too often. So that just wasn't realistic. We got a lot more feedback than this, but this is just some illustrative examples. So then we took all of this feedback and we incorporated it into a third prototype or third draft, which we called the beta. And then after that was finished, I checked that internally against the list of feedback that we had gotten from all of these different people who had played the game, just to make sure we were accurately capturing what they had suggested. And then we completed the first release of the game in January of this year. So that's what we're calling the gold version. So version one of the game is played on touch, stre touch screen Android tablets at this time. And we have kept it internal for research purposes up until now, but that is hopefully soon going to change. So this final version of the game includes everything I had shown earlier. So you had a side of what was included, what wasn't included. Now the final game has all of these features, and I won't repeat those. And the main learning objectives are the game are pretty simple. So what we want people to take away is that when you use inappropriate handling practices with dairy cows, this can increase the cow's fear and the cow's stress levels. And this can result in a decrease in milk production. We know that stress mediates milk yield. But also when cows are fearful or more stressed, their behavior can become more unpredictable and more dangerous, and this can reduce the safety of the workers or the safety of the character in the game. So just as an example of this top part of the flow chart, so when we know that cat when cows are more fearful or more stressed, their milk yield goes down, at the end of each level in the game, people get a score. So if they cause too much cow stress, actually they can fail the level and have to try again. And when they pass, they can see on the left side what the cumulative cow stress level was in that level, and then how that translated into milk production compared to 100% of the potential. And if they get above that dashed yellow line, then they earn a star. They don't get anything from that, but it's just a little bonus that they did a great job. And then at the end of the game, if they complete all eight levels, they get a certificate of completion. So at the beginning of the game, they type in their name, and then they can save this or print it out, and there's a space if they want the supervisor to sign, the date is on there. And so this is something that could be used to fulfill this farm animal care program expectation for documentation of annual continuing education and stockmanship. So now I think what you've all been waiting for, here's just some example videos of what the game looks like. So this is one of the milking parlor levels, and you can see that what my character is doing is similar to what my PhD student Monica was doing at the beginning of this presentation. So loading cows into the parlor without touching them and just using their natural behavior in their flight zone to get them to flow into the stalls. And this is an example of one of the freestall home pen levels. So here the task is to fetch the cows for milking. So you can see here the character is getting the cows to back out of the feed bunk. So now you can see there's salt blocks there, the cows are eating, the cows all look different, there's cows lying down in the stalls, you can see the cow brush, water trough. So we've incorporated a lot of the features where we got feedback from our playtesters last year. This is another example of that same level, but showing how we can get cows up out of the stall. I should mention one of my research collaborators is Dr. Nigel Cook from UW-Madison's School of Veterinary Medicine, and he's a lameness expert. And he was just blown away with the mechanics of how the cow actually lunges before she stands up. So these video game programmers had zero dairy experience. <laughs> and so this was all communicated to them virtually. I showed them videos, and they nailed it. So we were really pleased with how they were able to capture that relevance for a real dairy farm. So just going back to 
what benefits a video game has to offer. So I talked earlier just broadly about how serious games are used in different learning contexts, but what about the features you can actually incorporate in a game? So first of all, it's a method of active rather than passive learning. So if you're listening to me talk, that's passive. So you're listening, I'm talking. Watching a video is also passive. But when you're playing the game, you're actually participating and engaging. So it's much more active and you're learning by doing the task or by practicing. Games also allow you to incorporate some visualization to help convey concepts that might be invisible in real life. So I'll show an example. And they can also give you immediate feedback. Games also allow you to mimic situations that are challenging to experience in real life, either because it's too expensive, there's not enough time, or it could be dangerous. And related to that, they provide this controlled or safe environment where you can deliberately make mistakes and learn from those in a way that you can't do even in real life. So as an example of visualization, I think with cow handling, this is especially important, where people need to learn this concept of the cow's flight zone or their personal bubble. So this is just a screenshot from the very first tutorial level in the game, where you can see the cow on the left has a smaller flight zone, and the cow on the right has a larger one, because the cow on the right is more fearful. So even when humans aren't that close to her, she is going to move away to try to maintain that distance. So this is the way we can help people visualize these concepts that they can't necessarily see in real life. And then games also provide immediate feedback. And so I'm gonna give an example here. I'm not sure if the sound is gonna work, but there, is also, um, there are also captions. The cows are frightened. Your stress level and the cow's stress level went up. So what this is trying to convey is that you take an action such as yelling and what you could see was a little red arrow and a red cow face appeared indicating that that particular cow got more stressed and then the needle on the left moves. So the, the stress level of the cows in the pen has gone up. And since this is a tutorial, you also get some feedback in the voiceover narration and also some written feedback as well. Okay, so in, in terms of experiencing situations that are challenging to mimic in real life, I don't necessarily think a game can replace hands-on real life practice with handling cows, but there are certain situations you just might not encounter on the day of even hands-on training. So for example, taking you back to the freestyle pen, you can see a cow here on this crossover alley running around. So that's a cow presumably in heat. And <laughs> so I think many of us have encountered this where you go into a pen and you need to watch out for these cows and not turn your back. And so this is something that we can just program right into the game. Whereas in real life training, sometimes you're not gonna have the opportunity to experience or see this. So the next thing I want to talk about in this game, at the beginning of the presentation, I pointed out some of the barriers that dairy producers have identified as to why they haven't been able to perhaps provide as much training as they'd like to. And one of those barriers is language. So we know that the workforce in the dairy industry has been changing a lot. It certainly depends on the region or the farm, but we know that there are many people working on dairy farms now who first of all, might not have a lot of previous cow experience, but second of all, might not have a primary language of English, and that can present a challenge when it comes to learning. So when we were designing this game, we had at the forefront that we needed to design this for diverse end users, because we know that people working in the Wisconsin dairy industry are now very diverse. So we have to consider the language. Is the language content of the game linguistically appropriate? We also know that these learners have really high variation in their literacy levels. So some people come to the farm with high levels of education, they can read really well. Others might not even have finished elementary school. So literacy is definitely a challenge. And then we have to make sure the content is culturally appropriate. So that's related to the language, but also are the examples or the, the scenarios that we're presenting, would that resonate or are we accidentally slipping into things that might be too regional and not resonate with everybody? So one of my colleagues, Dr. Dominic Ledesma, he heads up the language access team for UW-Madison Extension. So he's a language professional and he really brought this expertise to make sure that the game was designed from the ground up in both English and Spanish from the get-go. So the, lang the game is fully available right now in both English and Spanish. And so this is just a snapshot showing a parlor level where you can see now this tutorial text is in Spanish. 
And in addition to having it available in both languages, we also wanted to minimize the amount of written text. So yes, there is some tutorial text that appears, but it's very, very little. So we want people to learn by playing and figuring things out instead of having to do a lot of reading. Everything that's written also has voiceover narration so people can hear that if they have challenges with reading. And then we also gave a choice of six different avatars or characters that people can use when they're playing the game, which some research has suggested can improve what's called self-visualization. So being able to picture themselves in that setting or in that task. So perhaps they can identify better while playing the game. So after we finished this first version of the game that has all the features I just showed you, we went out again this past April for another round of user testing. So this time we went to three different farms whose owners had all participated in that first round of feedback last August with the draft of the game. And we wanted to get some feedback to further improve the game, but also now see, does the game actually allow people to learn something? So what is their knowledge about best practices in cow handling before playing the game, and then does playing the game actually improve that? So this was a pilot test to see, is the game actually useful? So we worked with 34 people, but due to some procedural challenges, I'm actually showing you data from just 25 people who completed the entire game. And so what I'm showing you on the left is just the composition in terms of language and gender. So you can see among the Spanish speakers in green, most of them were male, but then among the English speakers, actually most of them were female. And they came again from three different farms. And we were looking specifically for people who work with adult dairy cows on a daily basis. So almost all of them, at least occasionally, milk cows in the parlor. About three quarters of them move cows to and from the parlor for milking. And then almost all of them have some other kinds of jobs on the farm as well. So these are self-reported. Some of them said they were a herdsman or a herd manager. Some of them move and sort cows for other purposes besides milking, such as animal health or breeding. Some of them also care for different age groups, so newborns or pre-weaned calves or non-ambulatory cows in addition to these lactating cows. And a lot of them also said they do bedding management. And then one person said they do a little of everything. In terms of age, what I'm showing you on the left is if you combine all 25 people, in the middle will always be the Spanish speakers, there were 16 of them, and then on the right is English speakers, there were nine of them. So what you can see is the circles represent the average age, the bars are the standard deviation, and the X's are the maximum and minimum. So on average, the two groups had about the same demographics regardless of language. So on average, people were about 30 years old, although there was quite the range from 19 years old to 55, and then we have some data about how many years they'd been working on that current farm at the time that they gave us the feedback. So on average, people had been there for about five years, but again, you can see some people just started that year, other people had been on the farm for over two decades. What I don't have is data about how much previous dairy experience they had before this farm. We asked that question, but some people misinterpreted it, so we're still trying to do some data validation there. We also asked some subjective questions just to better understand who were these people who were giving us feedback. So on all of these graphs, they're gonna look similar. So on the bottom, again, you'll see all 25 people, just the Spanish speakers, just the English speakers. And then on the left is a five point scale. So in this case, we asked them, in general, how much do you enjoy working with dairy cows? Ranging from it's very unenjoyable to it's very enjoyable. And what I want you to focus on in the graphs is the thick line, that's the median or the average. So on average, people found it at least fairly enjoyable or very enjoyable to work with dairy cows. Then we asked them, how good or bad do you believe you are at moving cows to where you want them to go? Just in real life on the job. This was before they played the game. And so again, on average, people thought they were at least fairly good or very good at moving cows on the farm. We also asked, how safe do you feel when working with dairy cows, since one of our game learning objectives is how cow handling can affect your own safety as an employee. So on average, people felt fairly safe working with dairy cows. We also asked them, how comfortable do you feel with using smartphones or tablets, since the game is played on a touch screen, and this is a really common question I get. So there was some variability, but you can see that on average, people felt at least fairly comfortable or very comfortable using touch screens. So then we had them play the game, and what I'm showing you is how long it took people to complete the game. So the game has eight levels, and the big pink boxes are how long it took them to complete the entire game. And you can see there is quite wide variation, 
But regardless of language, on average, it took people about 36 minutes to complete the entire game. Some people were much faster, taking you know, just over 20 minutes. Some people took almost an hour. And then each of the, the other colored boxes shows you each individual level. So the two freestall home pen levels took the longest. And to me, 36 minutes is a tad too long. If we want to use this game on farm and training settings, I think it needs to be a bit shorter. But these were really valuable data. And also what it told us was, we did do a good job of designing the game in both Spanish and English from the ground up because it wasn't taking people a different amount of time depending on the language. Now what I'm showing you I think is just really the key data which is did people actually learn anything? And I haven't done any kind of statistical comparison yet. This is hot off the presses, it's just descriptive. But what I'm showing you again is the everybody and then divided by language and then the left bar is before they played the game, the right bar is after they played the game. So the green portions are how many questions they got right. The gray is if they said I don't know or if they skipped the question and orange is if they answered wrong. So they were given a 10 question multiple choice quiz before and after playing the game. The questions were in a different order and the response choices were in a different order. So you can see the knowledge levels on average were already pretty high. People got about seven or eight out of 10 questions correct. And then after playing the game, a lot fewer people said they didn't know. They felt more confident in how to answer the questions. And on average, they got one additional question correct. So this gives us some hope that perhaps people did learn something by playing the game. This is just preliminary research. Of course, the next step is to go out and see, does it actually improve their real life cow handling or their behavior in their job? In addition to testing this multiple choice knowledge, we also asked them some questions about their impressions of the game. So how enjoyable did you find the game overall? On average, people gave it a four out of five. They found it fairly enjoyable. And I'm pretty happy with that. Some people absolutely hated it, <laughs> and some people really loved it, but I'm pretty pleased with the average. We also asked how easy or challenging did you find the game overall? So on average, people put it somewhere between fairly easy or neither challenging nor easy, so right in the middle. And I'm also happy with this because we don't want the game to be too easy because then it's boring. And we also don't want it to be too challenging because that could become frustrating. We also asked how often would you want to play the game again in the future? So again, a lot of variability. Some people never want to play it, some people want to play it all the time, but on average, people want to play it at least occasionally or even frequently. And I think this is good news because if this is something that gets used on farms for annual continuing education, we would hope that they'd be willing to play it at least once a year, if not more. And then lastly, I think this is super interesting. This is two separate questions, and I'm showing them side by side. And this is for all 25 people, regardless of language. We asked them, imagine these different types of potential colleagues. How useful do you think the game would be for them? So first we asked, imagine somebody with little to no experience working with dairy cows. How useful do you think the game would be for them to learn how to handle cows? And then we asked them, imagine somebody who already has experience working with dairy cows. How useful do you think the game would be for them to review? So this is this continuing education component. And in both of these scenarios, on average, people said that they thought it would be very useful. So four out of five for usefulness. So again, I think this is very promising that it's not just a way to learn basic cow handling for the first time for somebody inexperienced, but potentially also useful for people with experience to get these reminders. And I can attest to the fact that even with over a decade of experience working with cows myself, I learn something new when I go out and practice. It's really good to have those refreshers to avoid what's called procedural drift. So after we got this feedback from people on farms, we also thought maybe there are other people who can learn things as well. Maybe it's not just useful for on-farm continuing education. So we received a grant from the Wisconsin Dairy Innovation Hub to try to test the game with different types of learners. So over the summer, I worked with groups of fourth year veterinary students at UW-Madison doing a dairy skills rotation. We also tested this two weeks ago with over 100 students in an introductory animal science course during their lab section. And over the summer, we also worked with youth in 4-H groups of various ages. And so we asked them different types of questions to see if they can learn something, to ask their impressions of the game, and also what they thought about the role of technology in agriculture and whether they were interested in agriculture-related careers. So we're still working on analyzing those data, but I'm very interested to see if there are other people who could, who could learn something from this game. 
This grant also allowed us to work on version two of the game. So version one, we've been keeping private to do all of this research, but the goal is to really get this into the hands of dairy farmers and other people in the industry. So in version two of the game, by looking at the data from the game and all this feedback that we've gotten in the last year, we came up with some major priorities for the second version. So first of all, I think the game is taking the average person too long. So some people are very speedy, but some people are really struggling and I don't want it to take so long because that's just not really feasible. We know that time is a big barrier to training on farms. So I would like for the average game completion to be less than 30 minutes, ideally more 20 to 30 minutes for everybody. And part of making the game go faster is changing the way that you move the character. And so we're trying to streamline how that function works. And then we have a list of other things we'd like to improve that hopefully will make things go more smoothly and help people learn more and be less frustrated. And right now it only works on Android devices, but we're in the process of making it also work for Apple devices as well. So we're expecting this project to be completed around the end of this year, and then we are planning to release the game publicly into the app stores for both types of devices. So the iTunes store as well as Google Play. And people always ask me, are you gonna charge it? Are you gonna make it free? And that's something that's a little up in the air, but ideally my vision from the get-go has always been to make this free for people who work on US dairy farms. I don't want farmers to have to pay for this training. I work for a public institution, I serve the state of Wisconsin, and I really want people to have access to learning resources freely. So that's something that hopefully we'll figure out very soon. Um, I am <laughs> looking for industry sponsorship. So if anybody is intrigued by the game and wants to chip in, please, please come talk to me. So in closing, I just want to talk about some ideas for future scenarios. So for this first version of the game, we're focusing just on basic cow handling. So moving cows in the parlor, moving them to and from the parlor, because this was a proof of concept. It had never been done. Nobody had ever made a video game about any kind of livestock handling, let alone dairy cattle. So we wanted to see, can we even do this? Do people learn something? Does it work? But we have this list of ideas for where this could go in the future. So Dr. Cook and I had this whole list of ideas, including sorting cows, um, getting cows into headlocks, loading trailers, etc. But one thing that came out of these focus groups that we did was a request for more training on the maternity pen or the calving pen. And this, I think, really illustrates why we need to engage with the end users and go through this process of having these conversations and focus groups. Because we didn't even think of that, but a lot of employees said, I get really nervous <laughs> when I'm going into a calving pen and I'm trying to remove the calf and the cow is there or I need to milk her and this is just a situation where I don't feel as safe and I'm not always sure what to do. So I just wanted to put that out there. And that also reminds me one thing I forgot to say is when we did all of these focus groups, I had colleagues who went and facilitated these focus group discussions. I wasn't there because I'm highly invested. I had a lot of ideas that went into this game and I wanted people to be able to be brutally honest and not worry about hurting my feelings. And so this feedback all came from these focus groups that were facilitated by professionals and later transcribed and then I read the transcripts without knowing anybody's names. So as I mentioned at the beginning, if you would like a chance to play the game yourself, I have a dozen touchscreen tablets with me. We have Mendota 2, which is the room next door, reserved for the next two hours. So feel free to just drop in and I can set you up with a tablet and some headphones and you can play the game. Also, my student Monica is presenting tomorrow at 2 p.m. in Spanish. So if you know anyone who would appreciate hearing this content in Spanish, please let them know that this will be repeated tomorrow at two o'clock. So lastly, I want to close with thanking everybody who was involved. So I had a number of research collaborators who I didn't mention. We had a lot of people here in Wisconsin who gave us really helpful feedback to make the game what it is today. And of course, our funders, so the um, Research Forward grant from UW-Madison as well as the Wisconsin Dairy Innovation Hub. And if you have any questions and you don't have time to stick around and talk to me, I will be here all afternoon, but you can always email me. So jvanoss at wisc.edu. And we have plenty of time left now for questions. So I'm just gonna go back to this reminder and I'm happy to open the floor. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. So the question was about how are we planning to collect data in the future to see whether this translates into a change in behavior on farm. 
So we actually have a separate grant that's also related to cow handling, not, not funding this video game. It's from the US Department of Agriculture for a more traditional kind of learning program. And so that's where that video at the very beginning came from. But we wrote this grant to test whether we can improve behavior on the farm. So this involves monitoring people's behavior, for example, in the parlor before they go through the training and then doing follow-up to see is there an improvement in behavior. It's very challenging because we also need to protect people's privacy and confidentiality. So when we do those kinds of studies, it's actually at the farm level because we know there's turnover. We don't want to identify individual people. So we have to check at the farm level, you know, how often are people using certain kinds of behavior. So it's more like a, like a slaughter plant audit where you would see how often are people using the electric prod. You're not writing down who they are. You're just writing down, you know, uses of certain behaviors. And so I don't have funding to, to do that yet with the video game, but I think we'll probably learn a lot from that other project that we could then apply here. Uh, a sort of related question actually that I got when we went on to farms to get feedback, some of the owners or managers were asking me, can you send me not just everybody's certificate to document that they did this, but their scores in the game? And the answer was no, actually we don't keep scores and that was a deliberate decision. So if people are behaving really wild, they have to fail a level and they need to try again until they pass it. But once they pass every level, they get the certificate. And that's because we don't know whether their behavior in the game predicts their real life behavior. So some people are really by the book. They just wanna pass perfectly. They don't wanna make any mistakes. They want the highest score. But other people know that games are this safe environment to learn by making mistakes. It's actually a, a good characteristic of these games. So they'll deliberately poke and prod and do things they're not supposed to do in real life just to see what are those consequences. And that's also a valid way to learn. So at this time we don't have scores and we don't know if somebody acts nasty in the game, are they gonna do that in real life? Um, and so that's something that we still need to investigate. Yes, please. Yeah, so the question was um, if there are plans to take this program abroad. So we do intend to release this publicly into the app stores. I think it will depend on each country's regulations, whether you actually have access or not. Um, but it might also require translation, and that takes funding. So if people are interested in having it translated to other languages, that's definitely a possibility. But it would just require funding to be able to do that project to make moving cows in Saudi Arabia, for example. Yeah, so the question was about if the game could be adapted to veterinary scenarios. And actually, there are some things out there somewhat along those lines. So I can't remember if it was Filament Games or another company had partnered with a vet school, and they were using it to replace anatomy labs. And so I know that there's definitely opportunity to use it for a different kind of simulation. I've also talked with people who would like to see if you could practice hoof trimming using a simulation and that sort of thing. So I think there's definitely potential. I don't know if I would take that direction because I'm not a vet, but I definitely see the potential for simulations to kind of bridge between more traditional or passive learning and then real life practice, definitely. Yeah, so the question was about the potential to translate this not just into different dairy cattle scenarios, but beyond, such as goats, sheep, pigs, et cetera. And I think absolutely. So this is the proof of concept because I focus primarily on dairy cattle. That's where I wanted to start. I don't know that I would be the right expert to make, you know, moving swine, but I think it shows the potential that could definitely be adapted to these other settings. I think it could be really useful. Yes. Uh, so the question was about the knowledge questions that we tested people with. That's a great question. I think that we will eventually release those, but right now while we're doing some research, 
there's kind of a risk that if those are posted somewhere, people would have seen that exact phrasing before and that could affect the results. But I really like that idea. And usually when we publish a research paper based on this, like if I wanna document whether or not people learned anything, I would include those survey questions. So yes, they, they will be available in the future. And actually, in terms of how many questions people got correct, it is a little bit tricky because sometimes it's really hard to describe these concepts in words. I think that's part of why people have been asking for better resources on cow handling practices because everybody knows it's kind of a dance. When you're out there, you're communicating with the cow, she's reading your body language and vice versa. So I think sometimes with the data, it might not be that people didn't learn enough from the game or that they could have learned more. It could be the way we phrase the question and that's really tough to know. So we did do some pilot testing. We asked people to give us feedback, but I think perhaps those multiple choice questions can also just present a challenge in and of themselves. But yeah, I'd be happy to share those in the future, for sure. Yes, in the back. Yeah, I love that question. So the question was whether the animal has whether the game has variations in animal health, so for example, a lame cow or a cow with a limp, and actually yes, so we do have a lame cow character in the game because we want people to understand that when a cow is having that kind of health challenge, pushing her more forcefully isn't going to help her move better, so you need to let her go at her own pace. It's a pretty simplistic learning objective, so we don't have in there, you know, a lot of people are actually asking us, can you add a button to, you know, call your supervisor, <laughs> and, and, and that kind of thing, call for help, and something more realistic, so we can't go through all of those intricacies of how you would really do the job, so the learning objective there is really just, if you identify a lame cow, you need to understand that she's doing the best you can, and you need to just be conscientious of the fact that she's lame, but yeah, I really appreciate that question. So we we have a fearful cow, we have a cow in heat who's running around dangerously, we have a lame cow, and then we have a stubborn cow where um, you can either make choices to try to use a little bit more force to move her or you can leave her alone and see if she'll follow the other cows out of the pen. So we did try to think about some of that variation in cow behavior or health status that could affect how they react to human handling. Okay, well, I'm going to be around for the next couple hours, so again, if you'd like to play the game, just see me next door, and thanks for coming. Thank you again to Dr. Van Oss for your presentation, and as we mentioned earlier, today's training is accredited for up to one Dairy Advance credit. And Dairy Advance allows you to track your continuing education credits in one location in an easy-to-use format. Your Dairy Advance attendance sheet is in your proceedings, and you can take a moment to complete these and turn them in to us in the back of the room. A valid email address is required to enter your attendance in the system. I hope everyone enjoys their visit to World Dairy Expo, and again, please fill out your evaluation form and drop it in the back of the room as you leave. But thank you so much for being here today, and thanks to Dr. Van Oss. One to three next door, they have their room reserved for me.